Greetings everyone, this is Dungan here on my Redstone Test World with another tutorial. Um, I'm going to split up these tutorials in sections now, four different parts, and I'm going to go through them one by one. I think having a structure in these tutorials will make them a lot better. But anyways, this is the tutorial for today. It's a counter design um, in Chronotide by Sir Vladimir, a new custom map out, a new adventure map. Um, it uses a counter similar to this, but um, it used one in a beta test. And the goal I wanted to find out in this test world is to see if I could skip certain options. But anyways, the function of this is pretty simple. This is the base structure of it. Um, hit this button, and the light will just cycle around to the next output. So it's at 2 now. Now it'll cycle to 3, now it'll cycle to 4, and it will stay on 4 until another input comes into this uh, emerald again. So now it'll stay on 5 until another one comes through, then it'll cycle back to 1 once it's all through. So this is the base structure of it, and this is the full counter I developed. Um, this has 7 outputs, and it works just the same as that. It will cycle around to the next one, but as you, as you can see, it has a lot of gold as a gold section to it, a gold addition. And what this does is kind of sweet, if you ask me. Um, you just saw an action right there, but let's say here's six, and if I turn six on, um, what happens when the button gets pressed to six is that it will automatically cycle to seven. So if I press 6, it normally should stay at 6, but the machine will automatically have it cycle to 7, right there. And then it will keep going as normal, it will stay on 7 until the button is pressed, and then it will go to 1, and it will stay on 1 until the button is pressed, or um, the 1 input is uh, given, uh, turned on, and then it will automatically cycle to 2. So what this is used for is, if you have certain parts of it already done let's say you only have three and seven left basically what it would do is cycle between three and seven now so if you press this button it should cycle itself to seven four five six seven there we go so now it's at seven and then the next button press it will go on to three so if like you solve the area in a part of adventure map or finish something on the machine will not go to that area again because it's already done and then it will go on to the next area. So that's the basic idea of how it works. Now on to the next part of the tutorial. Alright, so the, for the required resources part of this tutorial, I'm going to go through it, uh, the required resources for one module. Uh, one single uh, output of the uh, counter. Um, so what you want to, if you want to have five, for example, you want to multiply these resources by five to get all five. So one module of this design without the skip function is 15 blocks of any type, two sticky pistons, six redstone torches, 16 dust, and three repeaters. And if you want to add the skip function to it, you would want to add 13 more smooth stone one more sticky piston, three more redstone torches, 19 more redstone dust, and five repeaters per module. So a full module for the skippable counter that I just destroyed is 28 blocks, three sticky pistons, nine redstone torches, 25 dust, and eight repeaters. All right, so the third part of the tutorial is how to build the counter. And the first thing I wanna do is have an input. Um, this input is basically a pulse, so buttons will work just fine for this device. And you'll want to grab a wire from it. Um, and then this wire is not part of the required resources. So, and the same with the outputs. Um, once once you reach the modules, that's the point it begins. So basically, from here, we would have two redstone, a, a torch here, and a repeater. And then we'll have three blocks above it. And then these, this is one module. 
and then you'll want to just repeat this for all the modules um, all the modules uh, that you need for whatever you're building the device for so here is two and then if you want once you reach halfway so if you have seven and you reached four or three somewhere in the middle you want to bring it around and oops build it like this and actually we'll bring this right here so you could just rotate at 180 degrees and there's the uh, third module and then you'll basically um, run this wire around and this wire will reach an end so when you reach the last one you'll have the torch at the last one and that's it you do not want to connect this in a full loop you just want it a full line touching all the torches and okay so yes that there's that and then each model in Pacific I'll go into that now so and this you'll have a basic AND gate with the sandstone part you want a torch on top of this block and a torch right here and the AND gate will connect it right here so this is the output of the AND gate then the two inputs right there to connect to this torch we we'll want to build a little staircase like this and lead some redstone dust down and then onto the main part of the circus the T flip flop I guess it's circus there but circuit um, right next to this dust on the ground you want to place a sticky piston right here um, don't place it next to the block because then it will power the piston you want it to have to be separate from this redstone line uh, dig a block here put a block over that um, when the block is over the torch the line will be on and then basically finish this T flip flop it's a basic design of a T flip flop. You want to have two torches here and then dust above, and that's the T flip flop. And then two more dust right here, and then the output will be this um, emerald. And this is for the non skippable version. You'll want to have the output here. But in the meantime, you'll want to build five iron or five blocks in this shape and it will come from this torch this dust line will come from this torch weave around into a repeater this repeater is important for the design so the wires don't cross and in addition to that you'll want to have another part of the same line have a repeater from this direction so two repeaters into the T flip flop and this wire comes from along here and the next module is built the same little staircase like before a wire to it and you want it to lead into a torch there's a line in it leading to another torch and then you'll have the repeater again just like the, so dig a hole three blocks like that torches like that and dust like that and then the iron line could be any blocks besides iron I'm just using iron to make it color coded but you'll have that same touches pattern redstone dust here repeater leading in and then this repeater leads in from the iron line of the previous module just like that so that works like that and if you rotate around when you rotate around you have the same AND gate shape just like so a little staircase like before and then the wire down here T flip flop as before. Like so. And then dust up the top. And this iron line. Normally you have a repeater right here and it connects to the module before it. But instead of that, you want to grab an iron the iron line from over here. Work it all the way around to this repeater and go through this repeater. Make sure when you do this that this torch, there's only 15 dust in between. You want to make sure that this line actually does go all the way through. If you, it's more than 15 blocks, you could just add a repeater along this line. It will slightly delay it, but not crazily so. And then once you work your way all the way through, unlike this input line here that just ends, 
this iron line will go all the way around full circle. So this um, this line does go all the way around to the beginning and it goes full circle around all the T-flip-flop connection points. So that's the iron line and now the gold line skippable part is next and from there we would want to remove the output of here because we don't need to move it somewhere else. We want to place three more dusts in an L shape. One repeater here and two repeaters there. Um, these repeaters have to be repeaters in this formation because um, if this is a dust, this would be to repowering this. And if this is a dust, it will connect to the dust that goes here. And this, this is basically another AND gate. Um, the input is basically whatever lever goes into this torch here, like there, and uh, get out of that way. But you'll want to have the power come to another torch, and this is the output of that, and you want to put a block above it because we want four more blocks like that, and this torch to power two redstone dust that goes to two repeaters. Um, this repeater will be set on full delay. This repeater is set on no delay. Um, and you'll want a piston after the full delay one with a block on top of the, uh, attached to the piston. And from there, you'll have redstone line coming from the block into the iron line between these two modules. So, this is a pulsar. When the torch is pulsed, so it flip onto the next part. So basically, you'll want to repeat that for them all. You'll want to grab the wire from here and into another L shape, and then the repeaters, and then the three blocks. Sorry, it's close to my other design, um, but three blocks. Oh, it really is too close to this. Apologies. Um, and then four more blocks like that. You'll want a block above because you don't want these two dusts to connect. And this would be the AND gate. You do not want a torch down there. Just like so. Full delay. Um, no delay repeater there. Block that into the iron line. So that's how you build the design now to see how the whole thing actually works. Okay, so on to my favorite part of the tutorial is how this whole thing works in the end. So I'm going to be using my full model here and as you can see the fourth one is currently on. This T flip flop is in the on position as well this piston is weird but uh, I used redstone lamps to determine it in the early stages of this sign, but as you can see, this T-flip up is on and it's powering this line. And what this line is checking right now is what this line is doing right now is turning this torch off and this torch off, as well as going to the output. And what it's waiting for is a button pulse from there or the gate forward to close right there. And what would happen if either one of those two things happen? would be that this iron line gets powered. Um, if it's a button pulse, the pulse will come through all these and into this torch. Um, all these torches down here will turn off. But this is the one that matters since gate 4, we're on gate 4. And if this torch turns off, this AND gate turns on. And when this AND gate turns on, this iron line turns on. And it's a pulse. Um, this torch will eventually turn itself back on again when the button pulse goes through. So this iron uh, iron thing will turn itself off, and when this iron thing turns itself off, the T flip flop it's the T flip flop it's attached to, gate four and gate five will switch states, and when when I mean by switch states is that it will basically turn four off because four is on it will switch states to, it will switch the state of four, turning from on to off, and it will come along and switch the state of five, turning from off to on. So when these AND gates are powered, I'll just use a button pulse here. As you can see, this iron line was powered. 
Um, it turned off the four T flip flop, and now this T flip flop is depowered, as I would like to call it. This redstone lamp is off, as well as the pulse along this iron line turned the T flip flop on five on. So the lamp's on, this line is on, and now the torch for five is off here and off here, and it's on here. So you could do that throughout the whole thing, and that's how the basic counter works. Um, it's destroyed right now because of the how I built it part, but um, that's basically how the parts works and how it detects, how it skips itself when um, the skip functions are on is through this AND gate. Um, this AND gate is powered through here and when this AND gate is on and this is on and this line is on and this line is on, these two torches are off and it comes through this repeater um, and the, how I built it, I used this design by using repeaters in the initial one um, it comes through this, this torch and it turns the torch on. And what this torch does is go through this pulsar, which sends a short pulse, um, through this iron line again. So, and then the iron line basically does the same thing to the two T flip flops as the button does. It turns the current one that's on off and it turns the next one on. And it basically switches these two states so the next one turns on. Um, when I broke the block, it turned the torch on, it turned the wire on, so that's why it skipped itself there. But if I turn it off here, it would skip itself to that one. So it could progress with this design either way. It could go on to the next one through the button pulse through that AND gate, or through a lever through this AND gate that turns it into a pulse. Um, and the reason we want levers is because if you want to skip one, um, right now this torch will be off, but this is on, so this whole thing won't skip itself yet. It will only skip itself if whenever this turns itself on, this line will turn on. Sorry about that. Something weird messed up when I pressed that button, when I shouldn't have pressed that button in uh, hindsight. But overall, this looks big and complicated but basically it's T flip flops that change on button pulses um, or pulses uh, and when the pulse comes through this looks kind of bolted here but when the pulse comes through it powers the current one that's on off and it turns the next one on and the pulses come from either the main input right there and if it comes to this input it goes through this AND gate here and this AND gate will be a button pulse because one of the inputs of the AND gate is a button and the other one's a T flip flop so the button will turn itself off eventually and but when it come, turns itself on it will power the iron lines and turn uh, toggle the system to the next uh, output and the other way the T flip flops are toggled is through the skip function. Since the skip is a lever, um, we can't use a simple AND gate because the AND gate will stay permanently on when this T flip flop is on and lever is on. Um, because this T flip flop is falling edge, which means it will only switch when it turns itself off up here, meaning we need a pulse pulsar here and this is the pulse I used, a piston one, and it will pulse a, a pulse a redstone signal through the AND gate output here. And it will switch the system in that way. And when it switches the system, this TFLP will turn itself off and this torch will turn itself back on. So yeah, that's how the whole system works. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. But I'm going to end this tutorial here. This is Dungon, and I will see you next time.